We'll go ahead and I'll pray for us. I'll start from there. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> yes, Lord, we uh, continue to bring our hearts before you, Lord, to uh, receive from you and be led by you. Mm. Um, Lord, I do pray that you would bring, Lord, us to a uh, place of clarity and enlightenment, Lord, as we seek to submit our wills uh, to yours, Father, in this way to be raised up beyond our um, our normal way of seeing things. Mm. And Lord, to have a, a clear vision, Lord, not unto uh, our own ends, Lord, but a, mm. a clear vision of your ends, Father, a mm. clear vision of your purpose, um, both in its immediacy in our lives and also in its um, uh, longevity, mm. Lord, as it extends throughout history and into uh, the future that you have for us mm. um, and for your people and for your uh, kingdom. Mm. Lord, I, uh, I do pray that <clears throat> as we learn to walk in a different way, mm. Lord, because we are indeed still learning, mm. Um, in leaps, Lord, and strides in our um, our capacity, Lord. <laughs> I do pray that, uh, nonetheless, we would uh, never fall short of our um, our passion and our zealousness for you. Mm. Or something that is, Lord, may even seem um, foolish and reckless to this world. Mm. But it's something that you not only um, love to uh, to see, and Lord brings joy to your heart to see mm. in your sons, but something that you even, Lord, uh, require, Lord, and desire mm. for those mm. that do acclaim your name and work mm. as uh, co-laborers in your house. Mm. So, Lord, I pray that we would, uh, Lord, even be able to uh, not fall away from, but uh, transcend, Lord, the, uh, merely a sense of um, uh, duty, Lord, mm. as obedience is indeed the way that we are ex express our love to you. Mm. Lord, be able to walk even in uh, both joy and in uh, in passion, Lord, <laughs> for um, what you are doing. Mm. So I pray that you would uh, bless this in your people. Mm. <laughs> Brothers in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. I can hear from your prayers the fire of God <laughs> is Amen. burning. Bless the Lord. That's a good thing, though. Mm. Yeah. Wonderful thing. <laughs> Delightful thing. I yeah, can do a mighty thing. Hmm. You know, that kind of fire. It was easy detecting everyone who is passionate for the Lord, am I? Right? Through human history, so. Mm. Mm. So God said, I'm going to use you and walk with you to do great exploits, you know? Great exploits. God is capable of all kinds of things through a willing vessel. Uh, by, the, by the fact that it he is with you. It naturally attract people, you know, who love the Lord, who want to be part of God's life. Mm. To want to honor God, serve God. Another trick. <laughs> mm. I know I will do that if I'm a king, you know, so I have all the kingdom resources, whatever. All the people that are willing in my in my, in my um, uh, will ability but if God want to do something or someone out there it's going about the name of the Lord well, I will have everything available for him am right so without any reluctance and I yet I will not give that to my son <laughs> even his word dear to me because he may not Going around with a worthy cause, you know, so in the name of God, in the light, what God wants to do, so. 
I hope that's not criticism to anybody. I'm saying, you know, so for me <laughs> as a king, <laughs> that's I have a song. Um, let's go on. We are in numbers again. The portion I had. I'm sorry. First, let's mention the title of the book. It is an um, expedition of uh, holy scriptures by. Alexander McLaurin, or the book numbers. The title where I am is "The Poison," the and the antidote. Are we on the same page? I think so, huh?、Mm. Yeah. Okay. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the will of the Red Sea to compare the land of Edom. Edom. As the soul of the people were much discouraged because of the way, and the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us upon all the Egypt to die in the wilderness? But there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul loathes this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bite the people. And much people of Israel died, and therefore the people came to Moses and said, "We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that He may take away the serpents from us." And Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, "Make thee a fiery serpent." Is set upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is beaten when he looks upon it shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Number twenty one, four to nine. The maintainers discontent of the Israelites had some excuse when they had to wheel around once more and go southwards in consequence of the refusal of passage through Edom, the valley which stretches from the Dead Sea to the head of the eastern arm of the Red Sea, down which they had to plod in order to turn. The southern end of the mountains on its east side, then, resumed that northern march outside the territory of Edom, is described as a horrible desert. Certainly, it yielded neither bread nor water, so the faithless pilgrims broke into the only too familiar murmurings, utterly ignoring the thirty-eight years of preservation. There's no bread, but the manna had fallen day by day. I was so loath this light bread. It was bread all the same. Does the coarse taste prefer garlic and onion to heaven's food? The complaint of being starved while it is provided. There is no water. No, but the rock that follows them gashed out abundance. And there was no thirst. Murmuring brought punishment, which was amend for amendment. The Lord sent fiery serpents and sediment. Does not necessarily imply a miracle. Scripture traces natural phenomena directly to God's will. It often overlaps its intervening material links between the cause, which is God. And the effect, which is a physical fact. The neighborhood of Elath, the head of the Gulf, is still infested with the wanderers, the serpents, marked with the fiery red spots, from which, or possible from the inflammation caused by their poison, they are here called fiery. God made the serpents. Though they were hatched by eggs laid by mothers, 
He brought Israel to the place. He willed the ponds of stains. If we would bring ordinary events into immediate connection with the divine hand, it would see in all calamities fatherly chastisement for our profit. We should understand life better than we often do. The swift shock had fallen without warning was interpreted, but the people knew in their hearts whence and why it had come. Their quick recognition of its source and purpose, and the swift repentance, are to be put it to the credit. It's well for us when we interpret it for ourselves God's judgment. And need no more so to urge us to humble ourselves before Him. Conscious guilt is a conscious of unworthiness to approach God. Do they dare to speak to offended men? The request, hmm, how is this thoughts? You see, people get wounded, hurt, frustrated in life. Do they f- first plead to God, talk to God about it? No, they shine away from God, right? Or godly man in their lives. They go to the familiar characters in life to complain, you know, as if they're going to find some consolation, solution. How many people do that? Most likely. Many. Few men <laughs> has the sense of detachment, the wisdom, He said, that is a, a obviously a very dangerous, a wrong direction to go. Dangerous because bad counsel. <laughs> the devil waited there to deceive you, to trap you. More importantly, you bring disaster to you and heavy burden, and the trickeries, uh, um, not trickery, but you know, just troubles to your beloved. To the one you have a duty to keep, safeguard, even spare. And, but no, man's way is pretty much like the father Adam, am I? So interesting. That's a serpent here. As a result, they didn't first come to Moses. Come to God, for solution. But they have their own council. How they start their own council become the whole camp, the culture of the whole camp, because they started with a maybe their wives, their children. Who knows? With no leadership, even. Hmm. The leader, many of the leaders, many of the seems capable men. But the word ways are very mean and debased and unruly. When wives and children stirred up, but everybody had a reason to engage emotionally. I feel now they have to do something. They forgot they are the source of the problem. They allowed the serpent already moved in into their own hearts of the way. Such a the will of the foolish people, stubborn people, when they insist on this is the way how they do things, and that's in the wilderness. They have a sense God is still with them; their life depends on God. They quickly repent. My question to you, to pose to you for your discernment evaluation: What about the Christian today? Oh, they are so stubborn. The mother double down, triple down. <laughs> they will never even think there is a God that required another way to approach Him. A、hey, most of the Christians in this nation assume they have good standing with God. <laughs> to begin with, they are worthy people. They must have a claim for the favor and the protection of God. What a lie! This nation is a Babylon.
the question, and it's apostasy. I'm going to tell you something, no one. That's why I'm sent here. So my voice is not a personal judgment. That what God told me. I choose to walk through it. Certainly it would be a disservice for me not disclose that to you, to hide from you, to have a could could no opinion about it. What are you talking about? For this reason, I think God allows us to walk together. So you be spared, more than spared, you can be a solution, if not a correction, to such a Christianity. Am I right? Mm. That's what you said about the forum. The request, continue reading, the request for Moses' intercession witnesses to the instinct of a conscience require a mediator, an instinct which has led to much superstition, being terribly misguided, but which is deeply true. It is met once for all in Jesus Christ. I will advocate before the throne. The request show that the petitioners were sure of Moses of forgiveness for the distrust of him and thus it witnesses to his meekness. His pardon was a kind of a pleasure God. Was the serpent was the servant to like to be more gracious than the master? A good man's readiness to forgive helps a bad man to believe in a pardoning God. It reflects some beam of a heavenly mercy. Moses had often prayed for the people when they had sinned and before they had repented. It was not likely that he would be slow to do so when they asked him, for the asking was accompanied with an ample confession. The serpents had done their work, and the prayer that the chastisement should cease would be based on the fact that the sin had been forsaken. But the narrative seemed to anticipate that after the prayer had been offered and answered, Israelites would still be beaten, if they were. Then it confirmed the presumption that the sending the serpents was not a miraculous. It also brings the whole facts into line with the standing method of providence. But the outward consequences of a sin remain to be reaped after the sin has been for forsaken. But they change their character and are no longer distracted, but are only disciplinary. Serpents will still bite if we have broken down hedges. But there is an antidote, a command to make a, a brazen or Carper serpent to set it on some conspicuous place and <laughs> to look on it. Might it stay the effect of the poison is remarkable not only at the sanctioning, the forming of an image, but as a sourcing healing power with a material object. Two questions must be considered separately. What did the method of cure say to the man? who turned the blushant, languid eye to it. And what does it mean for us who see it by the light of our Lord's great words about it? As to the former question, we have not to take into account the Old Testament symbolism which makes the serpent the emblem of Satan or of a sin. Serpents and bidding the wounded here was one like them, but without poison, hunting harmless on the pole. Surely that would declare that God had rendered in inoculars, 
They are also fat-horned creatures. The elevation of the serpent was simply intended to make it visible from afar. <laughs> a serpent on the pole, am I? It means like a spear and and they killed it. <laughs> you know, here, show you, it's dead. <laughs> it's gone. And uh, but modern day medicine said, <laughs> no, it's it's a power. Even the Islamic town worship the serpent. You know, so. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> It's so like from the beginning, God gave a man, you know, that serpent need to be killed, you know. I mean, not kill, maybe just use a stick, beat it away at least. <laughs> what a perversion, you thinking it has a healing power. The elevation of the serpent was simply intended to make it visible from afar. Now, you you go to the wooded area, okay, you go to the grassy area. If they're infested by serpents or vipers, what do you do? You use a stake, you know, <laughs> to, 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 to stir things up, to make noises, sometimes even beat it, you know, so that serpent be clear up before you. That's a, a imagery. Anyway. The elevation of the serpent was simply intended to make it visible from afar. But it would not have been said so high as to be seen from all parts of the camp. And we must suppose that it, the wounded were in many cases carried from the distant parts of the wide spreading encampments to places whence they could catch a glimpse of it, glittering in the sunshine. When not told, the Chuas Inga was an essential part of the look, but that is taken for granted. Why else should a half dead man leave his heavy eyelids to look? Such a one knew that God had commanded the image to be made and had promised the healing from the look. Jesus lady day said, Behold, I have overcome the world, am I? So fear not. His great his gaze was a fix on it in obedience to the command involved in the promise. So many people worry about life. That's everything of greater value, you know. It's more of our care, not God's care. People have few, easy to have faith. Actually, <laughs> people have many easier to have faith. Why? Because it's not yours. It's treat like a dollar, you know. So <laughs> Much easier to use. You're not on the burden. Unless you're not man of God. And what man of the world. That's what he want. A life under the weight and the worries and the limitations of resources of the economy of the world. That's a miserable life, no one. At least in God's sight. <laughs> a slave. That man has no wisdom. His gaze was fixed on it, in obedience to the command involved in the promise. It was, in some measure, a manifestation of faith. No doubt the faith was very imperfect. A desire was only for physical healing. But nonetheless, it has in it the essence of faith. It would have been too hard a requirement for men through whose winds a swift poison was burning its way, and who and the best was so little capable of rising above sense to have us from them, and the condition of the cure, a trust, which has no external symbol to help it. The singularity of the method adopted a witness to the graciousness of God, who gave their feebleness a thing that they could look at, to aid them in grasping the unseen power which really effected the cure. He then turned himself to it, 
says the Book of Wisdom, was not saved by things which he saw, but was by they that are the saver of all. The Lord has given us the deepest meaning of the brazen serpent. Taught by him, we are to see in it a type of himself. The significance of which could not be apprehended until Carey has had given the key. Three distinct points of form parallel are suggested by his use of the incident in his conversation with the Nicodemus. First, he takes the serpent as emblem of himself, and it's clear that it is so. Not in regard to the saving power that dwells in him, but in regard to his sinless manhood, which was made in the likeness of sinful flesh, yet without sin. The symbolism, sim- symbolism which takes the serpent as a material type of sin, come to view now. It is essential to the full comprehension of the typical significance. Of the incident. Secondly, this is laid stress on the lifting up the serpent. That lifting up and two meanings. He primarily referred to the crucifixion, wherein this as the death dealing power was manifestly triumphed over in the elevation of the bronze serpent. The power of sin is exhibited as defeated. As Paul says, trying anvil over them in it. Colossians two, fourteen, and fifteen. But then lifting it up on the cross draws after it the elevation to the throne, and to that, or rather to both, considered as inseparably united. Our Lord refers when He says, "I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me." So the latest condition of a healing is a parallel. When he looked unto the serpent of brass, he laid, and whosoever believes, may in him have eternal life. From the serpent, no healing power flow, but a one our eternal life is in him, and from him it flows into our poison dying nature. The sole condition for receiving into our soul that a new life which is free from all taint of sin, and is mighty enough to arrest the venom that is diffused through every drop of blood, is a faith in Jesus. Lift it on the cross to slay the sin that is slaying mankind. And the rays of the sun, the best of his own immortal and perfect life, on all who look to him. The bleeding slice might be all but dead, the poison roll swiftly, but if he from afar lifted his glazing eyeballs to the serpent on the pole, a swifter hitting overlook of the death that was all but a conqueror, and cast it out. And he who was born half unconscious to the foot of the standard went away, a sound man, walking, a leaping, and praising God. So it may be with any man, however deeply intended with a sin, if he will trust himself to Jesus, and from the end of the earth, look unto him, and be saved. His power knows no hopeless cases. He can cure all. He will cure our most ingrained sin and calm the hardness of fever of our poisoned blood, if we will let him. The only thing that we have to do is to gaze with our hearts in our eyes, with faith in our hearts on Him, as He is lifted on the cross and the throne. But we must so gaze, or we die. For none but He can cast out the cro- the coursing venom 
None but he can rest sweet footed the death that is entwined with our very nature. Please continue.、Mm. Next chapter is Balaam. He sent messengers, therefore, unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of, from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. It's Numbers 22, verse 6. Give a general outline of the history. See Bishop Butler's great sermon. It's going to be kind of in like a note form, I guess.、Yeah. Number one How much knowledge and love of good there may be in a bad man? Balaam was a prophet. A. He knew something of the divine character. B. He knew what righteousness was. Like of verse eight. C. He knew of a future state and longed for the last end of the righteous. He would not break the law of God and curse by word of mouth. But yet, for all that, he wanted to curse. He wanted to do the wrong thing, and that made him bad. And when he durst not do it in one way, he did it in another. So he is a picture of the universal blending and mixture that there is, even in bad men. I want to crack a little bit there, sorry, Noah. I think it's Micah, 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 Micah. I think it's a five chapter, eight words. So, yeah. Oh, my bad. Yeah, that's、so、okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, let's see. It is not knowledge that makes a man good, it is not aspirations after righteousness. These dwell more or less in all souls. It is not desire to go to heaven. Everybody has that desire. Perfectly vicious men are devils. There is always the blending.、Hmm. Many of us are trusting to these vagrant wishes, but my friends, it is not what a man would sometimes like, but what the whole set and tenor of his life tends towards that makes him. There may be plenty of backwater eddies and cross currents in the sea, but the tide goes on all the same. All these fancies in their whole array, one cunning bosom sin blows quite away. Let no man deceive you. He that doth righteousness is righteous. Do not trust your convictions, they are powerless in the fight. <laughs> oh, what a truth! This is a great, great. <laughs> wow. He is, is a man's real deal. And we're a good teacher. Go ahead. Number two. How men may deceive themselves about their condition or the self illusions and compromises of sin. Let, let me show you why. It is a great man with great convictions can be a leader, am I? To be an ideologist, then, right? Because he's passionate in leading others into his cause. Therefore, <laughs> if I had said, they actually were very adept and consequential in bringing destruction to mankind and deception to mankind. They're powerless in the fight. This one actually, maybe a lesser description, but talking about, you know, the Christians will argue day and night through the histories of believers, actually, beyond Christians. In every religion, every following of something, like today, you know, the horse divided finally of the week, got the A speaker of the leadership, right? In the house. And they argue. Why?、Well, they think they have some conviction. I don't think everybody is mean and mean spirited and banned by their conviction. 
they render the horse powerless. Nobody can do anything. Thereby render the government powerless. Thereby render American powerless. Not now, maybe. <laughs> but let's look at in the days to come. It's a signal of the decline of this nation. But those have a huge convention. <laughs> Made it this is big flash, a flash, a uh, uh, flash. They sure don't want American to be weakened in the ideas. They are serving and make this nation strong. A bond of fools, full of conviction, <laughs> but made this nation powerless and made themselves thereby powerless. That's a picture of Christianity through the ages. But let's go on to. These convictions will never by themselves keep a man from evil. But they may lead men to try to compromise just as Balaam did. He would go, but he would not for the life of him curse. Mm. And he evidently thought that he was a hero in firmness and a martyr to duty. <laughs> he would not curse in words, but he did it in another way, by means of Baal Peor. <laughs> Oh, we in making compromises between duty and inclination, keeping the letter and breaking the spirit. <laughs> the weather, beautiful description. Keeping the letter, breaking the spirit. This is called lip service, am I? We call them hypocrites. <laughs> Go ahead. Obeying in some respects and indemnifying themselves for their obedience by their disobedience in others. Very devout, attentive to all religious observances, yet sinning on. And we find such men playing tricks upon themselves and really deluding themselves into the idea that they are very good men. Yeah. This is the great characteristic of sin. It's deceitfulness. Mm. It always comes as an angel of light, mm. like some of those weird stories in which we read about a strange guest at a banquet who discloses a skeleton below the wedding garment. <laughs> Can I tell you the story? A little bit, maybe in love. You know, when I was homeless, you know, a lot of people at home. Eh? And uh, interesting to see Taran when I become a normal Christian, right? So associated with not strange circle, in a sense. To hear people see testimony, how God moved them to give money to homeless, you know? When I'm on the receiving end, I surely appreciate it. And on the giving end, which I also appreciate, I think it's wonderful to give people. Don't, don't, don't let me think I really criticize any of them. But in the whole evaluation, you know, because they, they look at me or perceive me in a sense as it's a mighty, wonderful, charitable act. You know, Somehow they spare from their budget, give another homeless twenty dollars. You know, they, they almost have no clue. There's something that I don't even think about it when I help people. When I'm homeless, the first thing I got money. I want to treat my friend at dinner, have this and dinner. That's just like a. They love me or not, I don't care, you know. I just want to give them a time because they have a miserable life like I was. Let me treat you. They have no clue. When I was not a believer, know nothing about uh, what I, don't even think about this stuff. Because people are suffering, we need others to step out to help people. I don't ever think in, in the time I have money and resources, I don't help people. <laughs> that was never in calculation. It's just a friend in need. <laughs> you know, you have resources. You share. You're capable. You reach out. Others can't. Others don't have a heart for it. You don't brag about it. You hide away from people. I never talk to people that I did this, you know. So. But I already know. That's why they respect you sometimes, you know. So. But that's not a point. 
That's not my testimony. That's my point. <laughs> That's just being a decent man, being a human being. <laughs> the Christianity we have is just so weak. So self engrossed. We don't even know <laughs> what it's made of. That kind of testimony is an insult to, to a homeless person. <laughs> Maybe being sold to the person who receives your money. He just got $20. What are you talking about? After your $1,000 budget? See the people in desperate need? I'm just talking. You know, make it a, a great thing, like a, something you just done. You've never done before, obviously. So, so poor. So disabled in life. I want you to pray on this point. Do not be cheapened by shallow people, Noah, when you serve God. Don't come to those wrecks, offer your testimony, okay? Just be quiet. Let them do their thing, but you do your thing. Do the right thing. Go ahead. Yeah, so I do pray that we would... Uh would walk in discernment specifically in our uh, perception of others and our uh, Lord engagement with them and the way that we speak and the things that we choose to speak and do. Lord, I, uh, I pray that we would have a mind and heart of sincerity. Um, Lord, this would enlighten us both into the intentions of others, Lord, who do and do not walk by your spirit um, and that we would be those that do Lord walk in your spirit Lord instructing us both to remain silent and also to to speak and even rebuke Lord when it is necessary mm. in Jesus name mm. please more um... father of lies Nile and Basilius Dinadato Diabolo. <laughs> That's a Latin. The less capable he becomes of discerning evil. I see. Conscience becomes sophisticated, and it is always possible to refine away its judgments. By reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern. Take heed lest any of you be hardened to the deceitfulness of sin. Three. The absurdity and unreasonableness of unrighteousness. <laughs> Look at Balaam and think, how could a man purpose anything so foolish as to go on seeking for an opportunity to break a law which he knew to be irrevocable? Yet what did he do but what every sinner does? All sin is the breach of law which at the very moment of breaking is known to be imperative. Hmm. All sin is thus the overbearing of conscience, or the sophistication of conscience, and all sin is the incurring voluntarily, the incurring voluntarily of consequences, which at the moment are, are or might be known to be certain, and far overbalancing any fancied wages of unrighteousness. Can you repeat that paragraph again? That's interesting. A little bit long. All sin is thus the overbearing of conscience or the sophistication of conscience and all sin is the incurring voluntarily of consequences which at the moment are or might be known to be certain and far overbalancing any fancied wages of unrighteousness can you give me a some kind of example or paraphrasing i don't understand what you tried to say here actually mm. Well, the, I guess the way sin is really achieved is when it is able to make it through, make it through the, uh, put it in a picture, make it through the gates of conscience mm. into action or thought. And so it does so through a, a sort of, a, a, a way in which it is able to pass through those gates, mm. which is, 
uh, kind of in an almost convincing manner. So that's why he uses the word sophistication because it it doesn't appear to us at the time, of course, as blatant sin, mm. but it comes across as very the um, first defiled conscience, yeah. huh? Defiled conscience in the sense, mm, yeah. Mm. And uh, in a in an acceptable appearance, mm. which is why he also referred to it early as an angel of light. Mm. Oh, that's right. Uh, guests of a banquet who are actually underneath their clothes, a skeleton, the, mm. those kind of things. I see. Because that all sin is the incurring voluntarily of consequences, which at the moment are or might be known to be certain. Um, well, that's where I lost. Mm -hmm. I think in other words, it's saying that all sin is the... Uh, when he says incurring, incurring means commencing, start, something. Mm -hmm. uh, it means it's the definition here is become subject to usually something unwelcome or unpleasant as a result of one's behavior. Oh, so That's it's, it's basically consequences. Okay, mm -hmm. as a result. Yeah. Of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. It's basically uh, coming in submission to even according to one's will, which is why he uses the word voluntarily. Okay. Can you explain to me what I hear at the moment? That's where actually I really lost. Ah, or my known to be certain. What that, what that means? To be certain. What certain for what? I, I don't understand that. So, hmm. at the moment, to certain something. Certain what? Means uh, he's a certain? Maybe he's saying here in <clears throat> his really kind of thick language. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> basically saying that we kind of get to the precipice of a sinful act and then there's almost a sense of uh this the sinful act carries with it a sense of inevitability oh i don't i i don't have a choice in a sense i see he wants to continue to sin he don't have a choice that's his become his mode basically huh since that right it's okay oh please so go on i got it i got it yeah so yeah thank you I mean, I got it in, in the, my mind, in thoughts, but I think I got it, the essence of what he tried to say. So go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's good. Mm. Thus, all sin is the overbearing of reason or the sophisticating of reason by passion. Justifying sin, basically. Justifying as if he's weak to resist sin. Am I making sense to you? So I think that's what he's saying. So go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Men know the absurdity of sin, and yet men will go on sinning. A rogue is a roundabout fool. All wrongdoing is a mighty blunder. It is only righteousness which is con congruous with a man's reason, with a man's conscience, with a man's highest happiness. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Huh. <laughs> I have a new understanding recently about the fear of the Lord. It's wisdom, you know, so... In the beginning, I thought it's the beginning of wisdom, am I right? So, the fear of the Lord is wisdom. It's more than beginning, you know, starting something. Actually, it's always exists. You can't think about the wisdom without the fear of the Lord. It's impossible. You know, so... Anyway, so go ahead. The beginning means the conditioning. It's like you gotta live on earth, you gotta learn to breathe oxygen, am I? You know, so that's the beginning. You know, that's ongoing function basically. Ongoing power source, ongoing provision, you know, ongoing mechanism. You know, so you, you can't plan something. And these days again, you know, without sunshine, I, mean, I was talking about in the beginning, I think without soil, you can't do it without soil these days. Without sunshine, you know, without light in a sense. You can't even do it without light. Uh, sunshine is like this too light. You can't grow anything planetary without light. You know, so light is already there. So it's like saying um, the light of uh, the earth or whatever you know, is, is, is the beginning of life, am I, from the plant, so, something that nature, so it's a, it's a new understanding for me, in the beginning I said it's a seed, you know, grew to be a tree, 
paradise are always there. So that's a new perspective, am I? <laughs> Think about it. So, the fear of the Lord is a beginning of wisdom. That's the English translation of Mr. Didi Kai B sometime. Go ahead. Mm. Four. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Go ahead. The wages of unrighteousness. How Balaam's, ex how Balaam's experiment ended is death. That word should be basic wisdom, am I right? Should be basics of wisdom, making basic prerequisite of wisdom, you know. So I'm sorry, I just thinking about the translators. Orbs don't get it. <laughs> sorry. At least the second point, you know, so I don't know how they understand what that original meaning is. I don't know the original language, so the thing about it, they translate like that, obviously they have their mind already made up, you know, so use that word beginning, you know, so anyway, so in the beginning of the word, the word is Ruga, that's third translation, right? In the beginning of the word. Interesting, huh? <laughs> Paul understood differently, right? You know, so he said the word keep the whole earth, keep everything together, uphold everything. So that's a different kind of understanding in the beginning, what it means. It's in Paul's mind. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to interrupt you. To share some uh, Spartan thoughts with you. So mm -hmm. go ahead. Mm -hmm. He tried to make the best of both worlds. So he ran with the hare and hunted with the hounds. Yet this was how it ended, as it always does, as it always will. How death ends all the illusions, sternly breaks down all the compromises, reveals all the absurdities. Men are one thing or the other. Learn, then, the lesson that no gifts, no talents, no convictions, no aspirations will avail. Let this sad figure which looks out upon us with gray streaming hair and uplifted hands I don't understand what he tried to say here. Will or will for what? For what reason? What was the contest? I lost a contest there. I don't know one thing for another. Learn, listen, no you. Or will for what? For for what reason? Why this will or will? I don't know. I oh, think that that's death. Am I death ended with all illusions? I guess. Yeah, that's in the state of been. absurdity. Basically, that's that means nothing has actually can help him in that miserable state. Am right? His life is set on the destruction of the city. You know, so I'm not sure. Okay, you help me out here. So hmm. yeah, I can apply in the context of uh, a a Balaam or a Balaam oh, scenario. Oh, it's a person life. That's right. I forgot the time. I, I do also think it can apply to a more general sense. Mm. In the saying that gifts, talents, convictions, and aspirations are not in themselves even eternal oh, things. Oh, yeah, that's right. His 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 action has caused him basically he's he's doomed, right, to death, to punishment of God. I see. Go ahead. I'm so sorry. I lost context there a little bit. <laughs> Please go on. Mm -hmm. Let this sad figure, which looks out upon us with gray streaming hair and uplifted hands from beside the altar on Pisgah, speak to us. How near the haven it is possible to be cast away. Like Bunyan's way to hell from near the gate of the celestial city. What? Is that amazing? Guy has a divine revelation here. <laughs> that is so true. I was just think about it as one of the encounters I had in life. Do you want to hear? I want to teach you some, some lifestyle, okay? Uh, life details. Uh, around this uh, couple, um, many years ago, they're from New Zealand. The wife is very talented, you know? So in the beginning, we see me into her, their life with fear and trembling. I restore their family. The broken relation husband and wife a little bit. And she began to come back to the Lord with a great zeal and devotion at the time. I was thinking about this last night, you know, you know so it's fresh in my in my review. And uh, she, you know, with a great, great uh, um, caution, rather, um, 
to say, can you help my one of my friend? Uh, because she's just, I can't, I can't help her. You will see that she's just, you know, she's just set in her way and torment herself to no end. I don't know how to counsel her. Now this lady was in somewhere in the States basically. So, and I said, sure, let me help a little bit. And the reason she was troubled is because she was like living with an oppressive father who have all the things sickly. And this lady, you know, never getting married, just devoted her whole life on the tyranny of the father, take care of the father, especially the sick. He's an angry man, a mean person. But the lady was touched by God, a very nice lady. So she wanted to do something good. She, she, she you know, from her scratches, the provision life, which was very minimal, she tried to help an orphanage somehow, some Indian orphanage. Indian minister, whoever in the name Christian, reached out to her and have her for money. So she feel obligated to help the orphan. Sometimes they send a picture to her, but she never know the people, you see. In the time, you know, as other getting war to help, she began to disclose what she is doing. You know, she reacted to, to even disclose that because you're supposed to help without telling people, you know. So. That's her. She was very religious. So, the the she also supported the sister, which we're talking about a little bit. And um, so, because of that, you know, uh, I don't know the thing being found out of the father or something. I forgot the actually the details. It's very remote in my review, you know. So. The point I'm making is that they eventually turn for me to receive me as a spiritual leader in their life. Just tell us what to do, you know. So, so I get involved. Actually, there are some familiar figures you know getting involved in the process a little bit as well. And uh, eventually, you know, so they decided to tie to me, you know, so to to help to to help me tell them how to do with their money, basically. And because I was set in stone, so they begin to practice that. And I had no clue at that time that the sister we're talking about is helping the lady who introduced her to me. Uh, that's not in the radar, you know, they never told me that. And the sister in New Zealand, somehow, seeing the money you arranged, there's her resources cut it back. She began taking insulin a little bit. She's a very spiritual lady, but her life is desperate. You can imagine the disturbing her finances cause a lot of trouble. So I don't know. They never bring to me, you know, so presume I know everything. <laughs> I'm so spiritual. I know everything. I try to help them. Ended up in the chaos, a cesspool of a chaos. Now they are very gracious people, but they are chaotic. That's why they have those problems. Spin out their life, can handle their basis of life. Oh, Christians, <laughs> good hearted people, but no wisdom. That's literally my judgment. No basic discernment and no hope, whatever. But they all think they are led by the Spirit, led by the Lord. It's incredible to me. Gifted, very much gifted. And uh, so, as it they were going around this. Obviously, there are some troublesome is in the brooding. So one day, two of them come to me, in great tear, trembling the fear over the phone, begging for forgiveness. Now, I have no idea what's going on. That's all in the own quarter discussion. And I heard the story. I was just like. Okay, you know, so not upset anything. I just don't know. I was, you know, this is absurd to me. And uh, so I, you know, asked a simple question. I said, "Why you guys don't tell me?" You know, so I'm in the, the speechless. You know, so I said, "Okay, what's and motive you now to come to me to disclose this thing to me?" You know, so what I can help, basically. He said, oh, no, no, we, we, we will not, you know, I'm not going to receive money. No, it's not about the money. I said, okay, then what is it about? 
the sister from New Zealand has a prophetic gift, am I right? So she had a dream the night before, or a vision rather, while she pray. You know what we do is a relationship with me, basically. Am I wrong leader or anything? You know so, and、uh, she's scared to death. In the dream, or in the vision, I forgot the nature of how that came to her. She, I was walking out the gate heaven to welcome her, but I'm standing by the door, you know, open the gates of heaven, waiting for her to come in. And、uh, she began to run in the beginning, you know, run to the gates, you know. And then on the way, <laughs> and there's a Pete. And the other sister, which is from America, is in the pit, begging, crying for help. And、uh, so she can't help. She's a very compassionate person, but professional nurse. She can't help. You know, she can't move on now. She really want to help. And the voice of God, what worse done? And worry she for us, and you know, he gonna close the gate, am I? <laughs> Your time is very short. <laughs> you have two choices. <laughs> Either you run to the door, <laughs> to the gate, and get in, or you gonna follow the fall into the same pit. So to them scared, you know. Now the the, the especially the sister in America, <laughs> found herself in the pit, you know. So she just oh God, I'm be helped. I said I I will pray for you, but I don't know, you know. I think you got to move out your father, <laughs> and don't depend on him for finances. We can help you a little bit, anyway, you know. Don't live under that miserable, oppressive way of life. It's tormenting you day and night, you know. So. Don't make you think straight, even. And she can't. So, and therefore, you know, later on, because of that, I said, if you don't do it, I will not receive a tithe or <laughs> have anything to do with your finances. This is this is a little bit dangerous now, for me. You know, so they beg me not to do that somehow. Eventually, the. The point I'm making is the New Zealand lady took over to try to help the finances, and、uh, so they continue on without my knowledge. And as this goes on, some some day, Annie began to upset with her because she do, she feels, you know, the other sister or friends not handle finance for her well. Even cheated her or something. I don't know the story. I said sorry. <laughs> no, I know nothing. I cannot do anything. I'm, I'm just in the distance, you know. But nothing I know. I can't. I can't really get involved with this. Not because I don't. I just don't have information to ascertain the situation. Even this is now more complicated. To look for you now in a fight, you know. So can't help. So you know. So. But she constant constantly bothered me, you know. So, so finally, I had to reach the lady and ask what's going on. She, not too much going on. So, the point is that it causes friction in our relationships. You know, she began to emotionally, spiritually withdraw from this uh from from me. And I can't help people remotely. I'm not there, you know. So it, you know, it's everything depends on email. We can't even have a phone call. So I, in the middle of it, and I was troubled by this all, this whole thing. And、uh, one day the Lord bring me back to this. He said, "Remember her vision, or her dream. She made her choice." But you don't need to feel any guilty. Your conscience is absolutely clean. You have, you have never tried to disturb in, you know, propose yourself. But it was a starting into me. To learn a great lesson, which is all in part to you. 
give to the people can be the most religious people you can get, Noah. That's my experiences, okay? Why? Because spiritual gifted people have a natural pride in themselves, think they must hurt God, they must be very spiritual, and therefore they can make their decisions spiritually in God's agreement. And it's one of the biggest strongholds for good people. The lack of humility to begin with. To think, because I know something, it must mean I can do something about it. It must know God has a special fear on me. <laughs> Such a re ridiculous notion. L let me explain this to you. In natural terms, in very simple terms. Okay? Even you, the best scientist, let's see, you have a scientist like, or the theoretical scientist, right? Like Einstein, Stephen Hawking. Man, they know a lot. My point is that <coughs> it requires a special endowment, experience, training to design a rocket ship. Where you may lift a man or, or some valuable equipment on that ship. Would he, Einstein be so foolish to think he can tell the engineer how to build that ship? You know all the science, you know all the universe, even he knows out there, he studied a lot. He went out. That's my point. You know, he will let the people who knows what to do with that to, to not interfere, you know, maybe generally give a counsel, but it will not interfere how they design this rocket science because that's not his forte. That's not the prophetic people in Christianity or knowledgeable people in Christianity. They know all the Bible, but they don't understand their assignment. They have no clue what God told them to do, actually, what they're capable of in the spiritual realm. So here, interesting to read this scripture here. It's like a bayon's way to hell from near the gates of celestial city. Is that amazing? That's exactly her vision. <laughs> and she made a miserable choice. Destroy her marriage later on. Her children scandered. Man, it was a huge ordeal. A couple of years down the road, the husband was so miserable, ended up in a drunken bar, eventually give up her faith. She will beg me for help and, and beg me to pray so that he don't get drunk again, I don't get a suicide. That's a worse spiritual man, but emotionally unstable because of broken family. After that, it's a downhill and then disappeared from my life. Never told anybody that, okay? Just share that with you. How dangerous certain things can be. Please go on. Let's wrap it up. The spirit of Balaam. That's a word gifted man. <laughs> but don't have good counsel in life. Go ahead. Balaam said, Let me die the death of the righteous. And his death was thus, Balaam they slew with the sword. And his epitaph is Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, got them, and perished. Well, you pray, wrap it up. I hope I don't overbear into you today's message. You know, there are certain things that's worth to share. You know, I'm going to use this reading journey, continue to impart wisdom, understanding to you beyond this things put in the scriptures we read it make it sense to you you know so yeah go ahead mm -hmm. yes lord there's so much that we well, there's only so much that we can learn lord in uh in our own readings and studies of things lord but when it comes to true knowledge lord especially that with uh um as it concerns spiritual knowledge lord and discernment lord much much more is learned through lord uh discipleship with those that you have in our lives to 
instruct and guide us, and even more so in our, um, Lord, experiences that you allow us to go through, whether that be in our own lives or those imparted and shared uh, through other, through others, like even in this instance with um, Brother Emmanuel showing or sharing this uh, this story in his life. Mm. Lord, those who, Lord, became, <clears throat> despite their spiritual giftings and uh, maturity, Lord, even they, um, Lord, falling short, Lord, of... Uh, the discipline in life that enables us to keep on the right path mm. not be led astray or to end into uh, a false light or which is in reality uh, a darkness of death mm. destruction mm. and so lord i do pray that it would be um not an overbearing burden to us but still lord uh, a weight on our hearts lord to um, in a sense, be uh, wary, Lord, of the, the trappings, the many trappings of the enemy. Thank you, Lord. Lord you... Noah, let me register some background this couple, okay? They were almost in every day recurrence meeting in New Zealand. Hmm. They read everything Bill Bryden ever read. That's why Mrs. Sonship tracked them. The one message, my message struck them. When they heard I not taught by those people, they were startled. But through those people, I get to know actually Bill Bryden, you know, so. Do mm. you believe that? They're waiting for the message sonship, but here I come with the message sonship to them. So a prima. <laughs> you know. People have a spiritual cuckoo with insights, no holes, but they don't want the reality. That's my discernment, the judgment to such people. Appetite of something is so deceitful. They can't take the manna. <laughs> the manna is day in the out, it's something monolithic and a boring thing, but it's a manna purged away. The human nature in us, the destructive ways of human tendency in us, as a young person, to learn to thoroughly deal with those things. That's not Christianity or natural parenthood, but they like to impart to young people. They want you to quick succeed, splash around, to go wherever to go, you know, so do whatever you want to do. Are you kidding me? Yeah, maybe God is going to use you in amazing ways. Who knows? My point is that the parents and teachers' guidance, then they fail a God. They don't know what it means to be a parent. Obviously, they don't have nothing to offer. Would you think Abraham going to have his son wander around like a Norman, like he was? <laughs> we, David, would think, go out, conquer the kingdom, Solomon, come back, give me a good report. That's crazy? Are you crazy? Would you think the priests of God in the promised land would say, let's go out. God will... Want us to carry the ark, wander around a little bit, and maybe we have more people running around, get more land. That's crazy, thinking like that. One, ten, seventeen, one, seven, January seven. Anyway, the point I'm making is that after all the struggle, finally you get the chance to really do the real culture. Really get to do something. Who are you gonna do it with? Your children. Your community. <laughs> and here is parents, uh, people have all the privilege to do that with the chosen, but they said, go out on your own, please. Or else we must frustrate you, uh, your vision. We must be a hindrance to you, a stumbling block to you, because we're not encouraging, inspire you to be somebody. 
what it means to be somebody. To be somebody, that's because maybe you are nobody in God. If you are somebody in God, will you not eagerly have your children say, please take this on, flourish in this, be productive with this. Am I making sense? That's common sense. You got a treasure. You got a treasure horse. You got all the things that you need. Why you would send your children out? You got all the land you need, the estate you need. Why you would send your children out? Rather than said, please take care of this and learn to take care of this and pass on to your chosen children. I'll wrap up with a prayer. I'm saying this mindset, a shallow, foolish question, especially in Wanzilicos. Few have the confidence really to educate the children, to get to the church, give somebody else. What about yourself? If you don't do it, why you go to church? You can't do it, why you go to church? Church escape for you? Anyway, go on. Please wrap it up. Don't be deceived by those people. I mean, don't be pressured by those people out right there. You grew up in a different way, with a different orientation, a different region. Hallelujah, different region. Go ahead. Yes, Lord, you pray that, Lord, I and we would continue to walk confidently in this vision. Lord, to be uh, not like those who, in many ways, if I could put it this way, Lord, are like spiritual intellectuals, Lord, always pondering upon an idea, Lord, despite its truth and its beauty, Lord, but never bringing it into reality or putting it into practice, mm. or in a sense, becoming that truth. And then in a sense, it, it burns and even, Lord, uh, in a sense, it destroys them, or for something of this power and magnitude cannot be kept in an idle place. Mm. It uh, opens doors, Lord, for the enemy to to move freely and effectively. Mm. And those that would even claim to, to walk in your light and truth, mm. Lord, when in reality they are doing no such thing, Lord, in a sense, they are like an economy, Lord, that gathers unto itself so much wealth mm. uh, but and with without lord putting that wealth into lord uh, a flow lord into mm. establishing it, uh, and connecting with lord the co the economies around it mm. in a sense putting wealth into a <laughs> lord uh, something else than stagnancy lord they uh. <laughs> They that's, pretty much become target. Lord, that's beautiful. That's beautiful, Noah. You have no idea. I saw the same thought this morning before meeting. <coughs> People always want more, but they can't make good use of what they have. And they're always busy, but they can't rest into a pattern of life. You know? Mm -hmm. It's it's incredible for me. <laughs> Busy bodies. I'm not saying rest is a lazy, am I? You know, but you build a way, <clears throat> and the self, more than sustain itself, flourish in itself. Think about it. you have two sons, three sons, some daughters. Aren't they not going to be different as the Christianity around you and before you? I hope so. <laughs> yeah, it will. Inevitably, it will. <laughs> That's today where you're standing. <laughs> you are far, far more at one set of wiser than many Christians. And most Christians, let me say to you. <laughs> many teachers, gifted people. <laughs> they think they know. They do great things the Lord. And the Lord is just like, you know, okay. But I know the one I choose and truly delight my ways. And truly delight my ways and want to serve me in my ways. 
That's a different color, bro. You go your own way, hold your own light, but you never come to my light. You never know me. You never interest in my way. Anyway, I need to bless me, Rampart. So I'm so glad to find you a willing heart, a wise heart, Noah. It's a delight to have someone you can really pour into, am I? Mm. Mm. That's you are. That's who you are. I hope I don't give you false compliments there. Okay, so it's true. Look, look. <laughs> we have a true fellowship here. So, mm. go ahead. Yes, Lord, I do. Lord, want to lift up my brother, Lord, my in many ways my father, uh, Emmanuel, Lord, and his uh, the example of his um, his walk in the Lord and you, Father, and uh, Lord, we do indeed thank you, Lord, for those that you put in our lives, uh, with which we can share uh, one heart, one mm. common vision. Mm. Indeed, we are never truly alone when we have your spirit. Mm. Lord, it does bring us such joy to see, Lord, your spirit manifested in the same uh, capacity and in the same positioning, Lord, in another, mm. uh, another vessel. Mm. It gives us such joy and hope, Lord, as to, Lord, the, not just the reality of, but the, the, um, the pressing nature of your purposes mm. in our lifetime and even in our lives. Mm. Um, Lord, I do thank you for Emmanuel's willing heart, mm. which is a willing heart is something we so often take, Lord, for granted. Mm. Uh, it's, it's common words in our mouths, Lord, but truly it is the heart, um, of course, that Jesus, your own son, had. Mm. It's, I think even as Emmanuel recently shared in a, a reflection you had, Lord, it was that same heart mm -hmm. that uh, Lord said to you, Father, that it would not be his will, but yours. Mm -hmm. Lord, when he came to that dark hour of the soul, as it was put, mm -hmm. um, Lord, to accept the final the final test that, was, that you had for him, mm -hmm. Lord, very much unlike the... Uh, the spiritual busybodies of this day, Lord, who undoubtedly in Jesus's case would have indeed accepted mm -hmm. <laughs> another way or through the, the searing of the conscience, mm -hmm. even described in our reading today, mm -hmm. allowing sin to uh, take a, a voluntary uh, place in the consequences mm -hmm. of any scenario, Lord, mm -hmm. as was read this morning. Mm -hmm. Lord, but I do thank you for uh, the hearts that you are shaping within us, mm -hmm. Lord, uh, that we are even shaping against and with one another, mm -hmm. Lord, in a way that iron would sharpen iron, mm -hmm. become Help us. more like you, Father, yes. and more distant and detached from uh, this world yes. and the, uh, the forces that govern it. Mm -hmm. You continue to bless this relationship here, Father, mm. and your work in our midst, in Jesus' name. Mm, Amen. Jesus' name. What a joy to spend time with you like this. <laughs> mm. so, Lord. Well, you did mean my day. I hope you mean my week as well. So. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> you can continue to make my week. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Bless you, okay? So, mm -hmm. Bless you too. Okay, okay bye. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh.